Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the status report highlight for the 5th of June 2018. Stress test 18 was left to run overnight so I hope you guys had a fun time. Eugen is going to talk about the upcoming weeks as our stress test version gained more and more stability. Peter gives an introduction to the conditions of our new central economy system and Adam explains the ongoing changes to the Belota airfield. So let's kick things off with lead producer Eugen. As we are pushing a large amount of fixes into the current stress test branch, our aim is to stabilize the build enough to launch an experimental branch that will be available on official experimental servers, as well as community servers, as server owners will be able to switch over. Oh yeah! We expect the 0.62 stable to be played less often, and we will move server resources to experimental depending on the player interest. Well, I think a lot of interest will be on 6.3, don't you? We expect a couple more stress tests to be happening this week, aimed at least a couple of fixes for crashes and locked character issues. We would like to confirm these fixes over the next couple of days and have the build available during the weekend for an extended stress test. This will be the version we will be launching for all players interested in moving to experimental. In the meantime, we have planned out the features that will be reviewed and connected to the new engine. This is done on the internal branch of development and will move over to the experimental in bundles. Last week, we have moved to review bug fixing of hidden stashes, chambering loop, enabling weapon classes such as the Mosin in-game, character unconsciousness, CPR, gestures, repairing, UI main menu polished, infected sensors, audibility and visibility, sheep animations and behavior. And this week is dedicated to the implementation of soft skills, fireplace, environmental exposure, jump, a new weapon, double barrel shotgun, UI server browser polished, goat animations and behavior. When these features will hit experimental, soon after the experimental release we expect to switch over and keep doing stress tests for the newest builds before they move to experimental. The process itself is focused on connecting these features to the new character as a lot of them have been under development for a long time now. Each week we aim to deliver the implementation and dedicate the second week to bug fixing. Switching these over to experimental will be done depending on the feature review and the community feedback that might affect priorities. So a nice chunk of information there from Eugen, it looks like experimental is not far off another couple of weeks. Which leaves the question, which of you server owners out there will switch to 6.3's experimental rather than dealing with 6.2's stable build? Now let's move on to lead designer Peter as he shows us some graphs on the amount of food across the map from Friday to Sunday, positions of food across the map as well as weapons and player spawns. Peter starts by saying the new central economy is in charge of the spawn and cleanup of items, infected animals, vehicles and dynamic events. It is easier to set up than the old central economy and allows us more flexibility with the categorization and areas of occurrence. A more precise placement can be achieved as well. After a series of internal tests during this implementation, we deployed it to the DAISY 0.63. The central economy is a complex system as its behavior develops over time and reacts to player interaction. Artificial intelligence. Testing on our side was limited in scale and time. To check how the new central economy is behaving on a mass scale in the wild, we gathered data during the 11th stress test from 18.5 to 20.5. We saved the storage files every hour across all servers which were constantly under full load. Loading this data back into the game allowed us to reconstruct how the central economy behaved over time. From all the items spawned by the central economy, we picked the ones that are crucial for survival. Food, beans, spaghetti, peaches, sardines and tuna drinks, cola, pipsy, spite, kvass and water bottle, and firearms, Makarov FNX-45, Scorpion, IZH-18, MP5, UMP-45 and AKM. The presented data is from the UK 0-8 server. The overview maps show where these items were spawned over time and similarly, the graphs show their overall quantity on the map over time. Note that one dot means at least one item or more. To put things into context, there is also a map of character spawn areas. On screen now is an animated occurrence of food across the map from Friday to Sunday. We also have corresponding graphs. Uh, let me know if you have any idea what this means. Here's an overview of position of food in the map at its lowest, Saturday 1100 hours. And here is a screen of position of drinks on the map at their lowest, Saturday 0900 hours. And here is an overview of positions of firearms on the map at their lowest, Saturday at 1500 hours. Of course, being Peter, the legend that he is, there's a lot more to read up on the central loot economy, but as this is a highlight, I'll skim through a little bit. So I do recommend reading it in full yourselves if you get the time. 
But Peter finishes up by saying, with the new central economy, we definitely have a great toolset to tune loot and its distribution as good as possible. But given the nature and complexity of it, it will take some time. Time. Oh, that was a bit growly, wasn't it? And finally, for this week's status support, we have your boy map designer Adam, aka Sumrak, in the house, <clears throat> who starts by saying, As mentioned in our status report from April 25th, we are redesigning Chernogor's and its surroundings. If you have played on the 0.63 stress test branch and visited this area, you may have seen where we are heading with this new redesign. I should remind you that map changes, unlike other parts of the game, are something that is not receiving updates on the stress test branch that often, because of the difficulties with the branching of map data. Anyway, I am happy to say that quite a lot of progress has been made over the past weeks, and we are nearing the final stages of polishing and optimizing the overall area. If you have played the more recent versions of the 0.63 stress test branch, you may have also noticed that we have decided to redesign the Belota airfield. I know, Istan was like, what the hell? There's nothing here. This change was planned for a long time and originally set to be made at a later stage of development. But since the redesign of Chernogors covering the area from Belota to Electro, we have decided to include the Belota airfield redesign in it too. Belota is such an odd spot for any type of airfield to begin with, but we feel the need for a number of airfields across Chernerus. Now with the Northwest airfield redesign close to being done, we have got a proper military airbase on the map, and we feel like there is no need to have other military airbases, and so the airfield was completely demilitarized. The concrete runway was removed, and the whole airfield was rotated a bit more facing inland, so the corridor is pointing away from the inhabited areas. Given the relatively small and odd place, we have decided to transform this airfield into a local airstrip, maintained by a local flying club, and have reused Northeast Airfield's buildings to support this idea. And if you ask, yes, we do have further plans for Northeast Airfield too, but not for 0.63. To give this newly redesigned airfield a backstory, it has been captured by the military forces, with most of its entrances sealed off with improvised structures. And that is all for this week's status report highlight. Of course, don't forget to read the community spotlight and the rest of the status report in full for all of its information. I just want to quickly mention the top of the community spotlight. There is a memorial placed in-game in the location in the screenshot for Jen, also known as Poison Antler, who unfortunately passed away earlier this year. We're all sending our love to family and friends in this hard time, and I think this is a really awesome thing for the Daisy Dev team to do for its players and community. On a separate positive note, I'd like to wish a very happy birthday to Black Hornet. Hope you have a wonderful day, dude. All links will be in the description below. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you peeps next time.